Okay, let's now move on to question five. So question five is more data handling kind of question. So let's draw on some of those skills we have and see how we can answer this question. Table five below shows the results of a recent gymnastics competition held at a school. The table shows the gymnasts' names, teams, divisions, and various events with total scores given to three decimal places. Okay, so just explaining this table, we see that there's the name of the gymnast, the team, their division, and the different sort of um, disciplines, right? There's vault, bar, beam, and floor, and then their total score. So this would just be the, the, the other, um, all four of their events added together. Okay, right? Their total score is their four events added together. Let's now see what the questions are because they will help us understand what the scenario is about. It says, use table five to answer the questions that follow. It says, identify the team that achieved the highest score for the vault event. Okay, the team, right? So let's look at the highest score. Just look down. You can just glance down. So I'm thinking that the highest score is this one here. And it didn't ask for the name. It asked for the team. So the highest score belongs to TGA, right? So the team with the highest vault score was TGA. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Again, they're just showing, they're just asking you to show whether you understand what exactly is happening in the table. What what data is it telling you about? Then it says, okay, determine the range of G. Gilliland's score. So let's first find G. Gilliland. So G. Gilliland is here at the top. So the range means the highest score minus the lowest score. Maximum minus minimum. So maximum is this one here. Minimum is this one here. So range, let me write it for you so you remember. Range equals max minus min. Our max score here we just said was for Gilliland was 9.625 minus 9.100. That was my maximum. That was my minimum. Put this in your calculator or do it in your head. But the range is 0 0.525, right? You could say points, right? You could say, um, or you could just leave it like that. Okay. So that is your answer for that one. Okay. Let's now look at the next one. It says calculate the mean score for the bar event. Now, you should, when you see this, say, when you see the word mean, you should say, okay, that means the average. What that means is you add up all the um, scores for the bar event and you divide it by the number of scores you have. So let's just firstly count how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can add up all the bar scores and divide it by ten. You must actually show this addition, right? Show it over here. So I'm just going to write it out, right, um, so that you can see. If you want to fast forward at this stage, that's completely relaxed. I just want you to see how best to write it all out, okay? So I don't want you to not write this out in your exam just because I was lazy to do it myself. So just remember, you get marks for this, okay? If I've made a mistake here... Please just take note of it. I don't think I have, but sometimes it is tricky to write it down. Okay, let's just check. We have 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. I'm just checking my numbers. Always check your numbers, guys, because it's very easy to write it down incorrectly, right? And you want to make sure you have all the right data. Okay. Now, all we have to do is put these into our calculator and work out our um, average, okay? Now, you could be saying, but why are you putting 9.1 and not with the zeros? Remember that with the zeros, it's the same as just saying 9.1, okay? If you just knock off zeros. No other number, but zeros, okay? So where am I here? Um, 8.65 plus 9.1 plus 9.05 plus 8.75 plus 9.05 plus 8.3 plus 9.2. Okay, that's my answer there. But I need to do it divided by 10 because I want the average. And there's 10 numbers or data points. So my average score for bar was 8.975. That is my average score 
for or my mean score for the bar event. Okay, so that's that, guys. Let's now go on to the next question. You'll see that it's very important for you to understand your statistical words because if you don't know that or your data handling words, you're going to find it difficult to do this. Okay. 5.1.4 says determined, determined missing value A. Now, again, the most important thing is we find A. Okay, there's A there. So remember what I said is that these four values in the table add up to this value in the last column. So we know that this plus this plus this plus this is equal 36.425. So to get A, we say this minus that, minus that, minus that, and that gives us A. Okay, so how I want you to write this, let me make sure you can see, is 36.425, or we can say A equals 36.425 minus 9.3 minus 9.1 minus 9.225. Okay, this minus those three there will give me A. Put that into your calculator. Okay, 36 point, 36 point 425 minus 9.3 minus 9.1 minus 9.225 gives me 8.8. .8. Okay, 8.8, .8, that is what A equals. Okay, if you want to put zeros there, you can. It again is the same as not putting the zeros there. Okay, so that is that question done. Let's now see what it says for 5.1.5. It says write down the modal score for the total points scored. Okay, modal means most, right? most frequently occurring. So we like which one of these of these scores occurs the most often. So that one is not repeated. That one's not repeated. Ah, I'm seeing that these two are repeated, right? These are the only two that I can see are repeated. All the other ones are the same, right? So the most frequent total score is 36.425. Okay, this is all just looking at it, right? Being able to interpret what's there. So the answer is 36. 0.425. Okay, so it's important to understand what is being asked. Okay, let's look for 5.1.6. It says determine as a percentage, important, the probability of selecting a gymnast in the junior division. So now we have to filter because we're looking for junior. Look, some of these are senior, some of them are junior. We have to look at junior specifically with a total score of more than this many. So it's a probability, right? We know that it has to be between 0 and 100%, right? And we want it for more than 36.970. 36 so let's look for the juniors. There's a junior. There's a junior. There's a junior. There's a junior. And there's a junior. So there's five juniors. How many of them are above 36.97. So this one is, right? So I'm going to put a star there. That one is. This one isn't. This one isn't. Oh, sorry. That one isn't actually even a junior. So that one isn't. That one isn't. This one is. Remember that it's 36.975. Five is bigger than zero, right? So that one is included. And 37 is bigger than 36. So we have one, two, three of the five juniors are greater than that, right? So we firstly went and found our juniors. There were five of them. Then we said, how many of those juniors meet our criteria? One, two, three. Those three are above 36.97. Okay. So our answer is three, right? Because our probability, we have three that meet our criteria, but there's a total of five. We're going to times it by 100 because we want a percentage, okay? So we say 3 over 5 times by 100, and the probability is 60%. What's important there is this is between 0 and 100. We know it makes sense. We've now actually done what they've asked us to do. A little bit of a trickier probability question, but not one that we can't do. Okay. This is a more difficult question, but again, it's towards the end of the paper. You would expect that. Okay. 
Let's now look at 5.1.7. So it says calculate the value of quartile 2, right? Quartile 2 is what? The median, right? Right, which is also the middle, okay? For the floor event, okay? So in order to find the middle value, we have to order all of the values, right? From smallest to biggest. So that's the first thing we need to do, okay? And we're looking specifically at the floor event. Okay, so let's just quickly order them, right? So our smallest here is 9.050. Then our second smallest is 9.225. Then our third smallest is, well, there's two of them, 9.350. 9.350, then we have 9.375, then we have 9.4, then we have 9.5, 9.5, and 9.5, so there's three of those, one, two, three, and then our largest is 9.625, okay, let's just count, there should be 10, one, two, let me just show that to you. I've ordered the floor. You can see these values here. I've ordered them from smallest to biggest. There should be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How do we find the middle of 10? You could be saying, well, it's an even number, right? So if I count from both sides, to find the middle, we go like this. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we see that our two middle values are actually this and this. Okay, because it's an even number, right? When we have an even number of data points, there's always two middle. Then what we do is we add those two together, right? And we divide them by two to actually get our median, right? Before we get there, if you had an odd number of data points, there's always one value that lies in the middle. If there's an even number, there's two values. Very important. If, you, if it's sounding like complete, like, craziness, right, what I'm saying, please go back and revise this section. This is something basic that you should have been taught when you learned about the median, right? Because there's an even number here, there's two values, we add them together and we divide it by two, put that into our calculator, right? Put it into your calculator. Don't just write divided by two there, right? Because you won't get the right answer. You have to add them first, right? And then divide it by two, and your answer will be 9.3875. That is your quartile 2, which is also called your median, which is also known as your middle value. Okay, so definitely a trickier question there. It was really asking you to understand what was being asked, but an excellent question to make sure that you've actually understood what data handling is all about. Okay, we have one question left of this paper. Let's go do it.